Hey guys, Dave from Medic Test Secrets. I want to take a quick opportunity to go through a couple tips for the tachycardia algorithm for ACLS. Right, so like I remember going through medic school and going through cardiology. Cardiology can be really difficult, right? There's a lot to it. There's a lot that you have to learn. And I remember struggling a little bit with ACLS to, to remember the algorithms and wrap my head around the content. And sometimes I would look at the algorithms and it, it would just get super confusing, right? Trying to make sense of it all in my brain. So I came up with what I think is a little bit of an easier way to kind of just wrap my head around the tachycardia algorithm. I want to share that with you and maybe it'll be helpful. So when we have a patient, right, that we walk up to, we we, you know, feel their pulse, we feel their heart rates fast, we put them on the monitor, and we see the patient is tachycard. We have already probably developed a general impression in our mind, whether we think the patient is stable or unstable. You've gone through your BLS, your ABCs, and stuff like that. You put them on the monitor. The first thing I do is I look to see is this rhythm tachycardic? Like, is the monitor showing what I'm feeling when I feel a radial pulse? And if it is tachycardic, the next thing I do is I look at whether it's wide or narrow. How dangerous is this rhythm gonna be? For ACLS, I use cash to remember whether a patient is stable or unstable. I think it's a really simple mnemonic to use. So CASH stands for chest pain, altered mental status, shortness of breath, shock, hypotension, and heart failure. If you have any of those signs or symptoms, right, your patient is considered unstable according to ACLS. When you look at a tachycardic rhythm, right, if you have a narrow rhythm on the monitor and then you go through CASH and your patient does not meet any of those criteria, the patient is stable. So for a stable, narrow, complex tachycardia, we do vagal maneuvers. We do adenosine, six milligrams and 12 milligrams, beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. And then if all else fails, seek expert consultation. If the patient does meet the criteria for cash, then the patient is unstable. So an unstable, narrow, complex tachycardia will get sync cardiovert. Now, one thing that I like to, I, I used to think to myself is um, sync stands for see you next class. Because if you do not synchronize cardiovert and unstable patient, you're gonna fail. It's super important that when these patients are unstable, that we cardiovert. If you put the patient on the monitor and you see that the rhythm is wide, we use the same cash, right? Cash can be used for any of the ACLS algorithms, bradycardic, tachycardic. We will identify whether the patient has chest pain, altered mental status, shortness of breath, signs of shock, hypotension, or signs of heart failure. If the patient does not meet that criteria, patient is stable, will consider adenosine for a monomorphic and regular rhythm. And if that's unsuccessful, we'll administer an antiarrhythmic and then consider expert consultation. If the patient is unstable, then we will synchronize cardiovert. So for me, looking at this is a little bit easier to understand than looking at the ACLS algorithm itself. Just make sure you know the process that you have to walk through from patient contact, ABCs, you gotta get IV access, you gotta get a 12 lead, apply oxygen if necessary, all that stuff. You wanna have that step-by-step -step process. If you are having trouble with ACLS cardiology, or anything preparing for your paramedic psychomotor exam, leave a comment and let me know what you're struggling with and subscribe to the channel for more videos.